Hey guys, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. Now, a few months ago, I did a video on how to use a pipe bender, but today, this is kind of like the part two of that, how to use a hand tool bender. These little guys are so good. You gotta check out the video on how to use them, okay? See you right after this. <laughs> Okay guys, we have two hand tube benders in front of us. Can anyone tell me the difference between the two? Well, if you said the one on the bottom is for bending up to 90 degrees, then you would be correct. And if you said the one on the top is for bending all the way up to 180 degrees, then you would also be right. So you're able to make a complete 90 degree bend with this one. And with this, you can make a complete 180 degree turn. Now these tools are for bending softer, less rigid tubing, most likely copper, you know, that's used for supply lines for refrigeration and HVAC applications, you know, ice makers, heat pumps, compressors, etc. Now, before we go any further, you may be wondering, what is the difference between a pipe and a tube? Now the difference between a pipe and a tube may seem obvious to some, but the technical difference is that a pipe will always be round and a tube can be round, square, or rectangular. Pipes are measured by the inner diameter. The inner diameter is the distance between one inner end of the pipe and the other inner end of the pipe. And that's what's called its nominal pipe size or NPS, an American standard. And its wall thickness, that's the thickness of the pipe wall, is referred to by its schedule. For example, Schedule 40 pipe is the most common, but it can range from Schedule 5 to Schedule 80. I know it's kind of hard to read, but if you can see right here, it says 40, and I think that's an S next to it. So this is about a Schedule 40 right here. Now a tube is usually referred to by its outer diameter. That's the distance from the outside of one end to the outside of the other end. And its wall thickness is referred to as its gauge. For example, this is three quarter inch tubing. I think I can show you guys right here. It says three quarters. And that means it just has an outer diameter of three quarter inches. Now this is a type L. Can you guys see the type L there next to the three quarters? Well, that means it has a type L gauge or wall thickness, okay? Type L means that it's medium walled, okay? Meaning that it's between a type K or a type M. So you have different types. You have type K, you have type L, you have type M, and you also have one called DMV. Type L means it's medium walled meaning that it's suited for residential and commercial uses. A type K is thicker walled, meaning that it's suited for residential, commercial, underground, and industrial uses. A type M is thinner walled, okay? That's for light, commercial, and residential, right? And then you have one called DMV, and that's for drainage, waste, and vents, okay? You can use that one for that. So that's just a little background on the difference between a pipe and a tube, because it's very important to know what kind of tube you're dealing with so you can get the appropriate pipe bender or tube bender to bend your pipe or tube. Now, if we look at our tube bender, we're gonna see three slots. The first slot right here, the smallest slot is for a quarter inch outer diameter tube. The second slot is for a 5 16th outer diameter tube. And the third slot is for a 3 8 inch outer diameter tube. Okay, so we got a 10 foot coil of quarter inch outer diameter copper tubing, and we're going to stretch out an arbitrary length from this and cut it so we can demonstrate how to use our hand tube bender. That's about long enough. And we're gonna take our tube cutter and cut off the length there. Now it's best to map out your bends first on a piece of paper or the tubing itself. If you have the specs, that's even better. So you know how much tubing you need. So if you're replacing tubing, keep the old tubing because that's even better because you have the old tubing as a reference. Okay, so we don't have any specs. So for the sake of illustration, we're gonna mark off our tubing, okay? So we're gonna make the left end of the tubing the first entry point into the bender. So our first bend will be aligned with the L on the bender okay so if you enter in from the left and the first leg or length of your tubing okay let's just say that's your first bend this would be considered the leg okay 
So any distance between bends are considered legs, right? So if the tube enters the bender from the right to the left, the first leg will be sticking out to the left of the zero degree mark, and that first mark for the first bend would have to align with the L on the bender. And then you just bend from there. If you measured your first leg from the right side of your tube all the way to the first bend, you wanna enter into the tube from the right and line it up with the R mark. So let's just mark off our tubing, all right? Let's just say the first bend will be at five inches. The second bend will be at nine inches. Third bend will be at 13 inches. And let's just say one more bend will be at 17 inches. Don't forget to mark all the way around your tubing when you mark it. So we're gonna make our first bend a 90 degree bend, this bend right here. So the first thing we wanna do is take our tube bender and line up the zeros on the tube bender. You got a zero here and a zero here. You wanna make sure they're lined up, all right? So we're gonna take our tubing and we're gonna enter in from the right to the left, right? And we're gonna make sure that we put it in our quarter inch slot because this is quarter inch outer diameter tubing. So let's go ahead and place it in there. And we wanna make sure that we line up this mark with the L because the leg, this first leg right here is gonna to be to the left of the zero degree mark. Okay, so we're gonna line it up with the L. And once again, that mark on the tubing represents the center of the bend. So once it's lined up with the L, we just wanna take our lever and slowly bring it down, bring the zero down to 90 degrees. Okay. And with the lever, and you should have a 90 degree band right there. And what you can do is you can take a square or a right angle, a true right angle, and place this against it to make sure that it's square. Let's take our angle finder here, set it at 90 degrees, and uh, see if this thing is square. Our second band is gonna be another 90, so we can lift the lever up like that, place our pipe, back in the slot, the quarter inch slot. All right, bring the lever down. And we wanna make this a U shape. So let's line up a mark with the L once again. And then we can turn it this way to kind of look down that direction to make sure everything's straight. All right. And then we can go for our second bend, second 90 degree bend. Okay, make sure that the zero is lined up. Make sure that the mark is on the L and bring the lever down slowly. And bring the zero once again to 90. So now we have our two bends and that's a U shape. It's not quite the straightest there, but Sometimes you can twist it a little bit to make sure that it lines up. Okay, so we're gonna make our third bend, this one right here, a 180 degree bend. So we're gonna take our 180 degree hand tube bender and place our tube in it. And we wanna make sure that we line up the mark with the L once again. Make sure that we eyeball it to make sure that it's straight. And then I want to bring this down once again. Bring the zero all the way around. To 180 degrees. Bring it 
a little bit more. And release it from the tube bender. And there you have your 180 degree bend. Okay guys, our last bend, this one right here is gonna be a 45 degree bend, okay? And it's gonna go this way. But this time we're gonna use the R mark on the pipe bender. Make sure that we line up the mark with the R. Make sure the zeros are lined up and we bring it down to 45. So there you have it guys. Okay guys, I hope you saw how useful these little things are, right? Hopefully you got something out of this basic tutorial on how to use hand tube benders. These things are so great, especially when you're in the HVAC business or you have to replace a supply line or something like that. Anyway guys, if you learned something, hit the like and subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.